Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. Welcome to episode 1000. It's kind of mind-blowing to think that I've sat here for four years and, and said those opening lines to you and um, a thousand times. Crazy. And today I've got something a little different. I'm going to show you some stuff about my town and talk about it. I was hoping to put together a little bit of a movie, a little bit of an expose. Uh, on my town, um, but that project has taken on a bigger life, and I'm excited about doing that project right now, so I'm going to keep working on that as like a its own thing. And today I just want to tell you a little bit about my hometown, because when we talked about what I should do for episode 1000, many of you said you wanted to hear a little bit about it. So, if you're not aware, I am from Fairmont, West Virginia. I was born here. I was born in this hospital, which was at the time known as Fairmont General. It's now Fairmont Regional Medical Center. And for the first 18 years of my life, uh, my world revolved around within a mile of this hospital. My parents' house was just a few houses up the road. My The first house I ever purchased was just one hill over. My elementary school and my high schools were all within a mile of here. And this was kind of like my 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 proving grounds, I guess. Uh, this parking lot that I'm shooting right now has always been a parking lot, and it was kind of like a playground for local kids. We, we rode bikes there, skateboard, played flag football, and the building that's behind me was a 7-Eleven, which also served as my bus stop, and it was a like little cultural meeting center for the kids in the area, and they had video games, and that's probably where my love of video games really got rooted because um, I would try to go down there every day before school and play some uh, some video games before I had to get on the bus. My elementary school, uh, elementary, I don't know, we had like an intermediary school, which was fifth and sixth grade, and then a junior high. Uh, I don't have footage of those, but my they were a little farther away. They were on the other side of town. And so I, I rode bus all those years when I was in high school. My high school was with less than a mile, so there was no bus and I had to walk. And my high school campus is amazing. I don't know when the school was built, but uh, the campus is, it feels like a college campus. It's this wide open, rolling hill campus. The building is just this old world, gorgeous structure. Really awesome. And like most of this town, it was built in a completely different era. And so, Fairmont exists because of coal. Uh, it was founded because of coal. Well, that's not true. It was founded because of taxes, but later on in its years, uh, it, it, it became the epicenter of coal in this area. There, um, there were something like two dozen coal mines spread all over this, within like a, I don't know, 15 mile radius of this town. And at, during the boom, during the coal boom, there was tens of thousands of workers employed here. There was multiple railways that ran through here. The B&O Railroad ran here, through here from Baltimore to Wheeling and carried a lot of our coal. Uh, Fairmont sits at the confluence of the Monongahela River, which is formed when the Tigert and the West Fork meet. And that river flows north to Pittsburgh. So a lot of our coal headed north on the rivers on barges uh, to fuel the steel industry there during the Industrial Revolution. And I can remember, even in the 80s, seeing coal barges constantly going up and down that river. Um, the entire downtown area was essentially built out to support the coal industry. There was hotels. There was uh, uh, Consol headquarters was here. There was... There was quite a few mining companies that had offices here so there was shopping and and a very vibrant downtown life during the kind of early 1900s but ultimately that all kind of dried up in the 70s or so when the coal smelters started to kind of go offline um and then coal started to decline uh the town kind of fell apart with it we had a few manufacturing plants here um, we still have one. We had an aluminum smelter named Alcan. It's now Novellus, I think. Uh, I think they're still doing uh, aluminum work there. Owens, Illinois had a factory here. My dad worked at when he was a kid and it employed thousands. 
Uh, and when when coal basically declined, oh, uh, Westinghouse. Westinghouse had a factory here. When when coal declined and and jobs started leaving the area, those jobs left also, and just vacated this place. Something like in the 50s, there was 30-ish thousand people here. I think today there's about 18,000, and it's been going down um, recently. It went up for a little while because we got um, some interest in our High Technology Foundation. Uh, they built a park called the I-79 Technology Park, and uh, that was in the 90s when I was in high school. It opened, and they offered the land to some government agencies for free, free of charge. And so the FBI built a temporary center here. NASA built a facility here. Uh, White Collar Crime built a facility here. And that brought in some jobs. And the hope was that that technology park would bring in thousands of jobs, uh, of tech jobs, and kind of reshape uh, the area. It never really took off. Uh, there's been, uh, most of those office buildings have set vacant for a very long time. Um, you know, it, it is what it is, but it's my home. I've lived here my whole life. Uh, all 36 years of my 41 years on this planet have been in this town. And I've, I've said before that I, I've said something, I think on this show that kind of upset some people that a lot of West Virginia, if you go to kind of rural West Virginia, you'll find these towns that only exist because the people there forgot to leave. And that sounds abrasive, but that's not my intent. It's more endearing. It's more like the jobs were once there for this town to exist. We used to have sustenance farming. We used to have uh, um, cattle farming. We used to, we still do, but it's not an industry. We used to have industry here. Logging was a thing. And that all evaporated. And But these towns kind of stayed because there's a bit of a resilience here. There's a bit of like, this is our land. This is what we know. And it's the same with me. You know, this town doesn't have a lot to offer me. My Of my 36 years living in this town, I've only ever worked in this town for like five years. I've always worked in the neighboring towns, which are much bigger, uh, have much more opportunity. But this is my home, you know. And there's something here. This probably won't make it into the movie, so I guess I'll share it here. There's a little bit of a, there's a, there's something about West Virginia that you might not know. There's a bit of cultural identity that exists here, and it was founded right here in Fairmont because of coal, and that is the pepperoni roll. In fact, I'm wearing the Country Club Bakery pepperoni roll T-shirt right now. In the late 1800s to early 1900s. Um, millions of Italian immigrants came to America. And a lot of them ended up right here in Marion County and Harrison County, West Virginia, um, in the mines, working the coal mines. And they brought all of their awesome heritage and culture and, and, and just life with them. And we still have very large pockets of Italian um, uh, people here. <laughs> and I, when I, when I travel and I tell people that, like, you'd be surprised, you know, I have authentic Italian food in West Virginia and it, I do, it's right here. And the pepperoni roll came into existence because of that, because of those immigrants, those coal miners were looking for easily produced, uh, food that was easy to consume in a mine, uh, that, that didn't require refrigeration and the pepperoni roll was born. I don't think that this is a unique food to West Virginia, but because of the coal mine, because of the the th thousands of miners that ate this food for a hundred years, it has become a part of West Virginia cultural identity. And Country Club Bakery claims that they were the first commercial uh, bakery that sold pepperoni rolls. I don't know if that's true. It is what it is. I do know the bakery was founded in 1927. It's still here, and I still go there when I want some hometown pepperoni rolls because it is my pepperoni roll of choice. If you don't know, pepperoni roll is simply pepperoni baked inside of Italian bread. That's it, and it's amazing. The grease kind of seeps into the bread and gives it its own new flavor. Uh, the pepperoni, it can be either stick or sliced form, and you'll find people who are willing to, like, really argue and fight over which one's better than the other, but it is it is ubiquitous in West Virginia. You can travel to any gas station and pick these up. Any concession stand at any sporting event that happens in a state, you can pick these up. Uh, restaurants serve them usually with like sauce and cheese. It's a, it's a big deal, and 
right here in Fairmont, West Virginia, is Country Club Bakery, the best in the world. And I think if you want to try a little bit of West Virginia heritage yourself, you can visit their website. I think it's countryclubbakery.com. I'll put a link in the description, and you can order pepperoni rolls, and they will ship them worldwide, and they have. And um, if you just want to taste my hometown, <laughs> you, you can do that. These things, ha when I eat a pepperoni roll from Country Club Bakery, it's like, it's just, it just, the memories just flood, because as a child, my parents weren't wealthy, so we would take car trips to go, like, to see state parks or, um, you know, travel to see my dad's aunt who had a summer home on a lake and stuff, and we always took pepperoni rolls. So this was, like, our travel food. We would eat them in the car so we didn't have to stop at restaurants, and so there's a lot of memories for me tied to tied to these uh, this wonderful food. And I think that a lot of West Virginians will, will agree that it is a, it's something, it's a point of pride for us. Like it's our, it's our thing. And like I said, I don't think it's a unique thing. I, you can probably get pepperoni rolls somewhere else in the world. Um, but it's not an, it's not an identity like it is here. So that's a little bit about my hometown. I hope that you find that even remotely interesting. I, obviously you find something that I do interesting because you keep coming back a thousand times now. And I'm so proud of that. It's so, it's so fun to sit here every day, uh, even on my bad days, my darkest days, and tell you that I appreciate you. Because the reality of that statement, I don't know that I can get the gravity of that statement through the lens. It really means so much to me that you come back and check up on me and that you have fueled my love of this format, of this diary, and it's kept me going for four years and a thousand episodes. <sighs> so, a thousand more. We can do it. I, next week's going to probably bring a few changes to the show. Uh, we'll see. I have some plans, but whether I get it done or not is a different story because it's my birthday tomorrow and it's M's birthday on Sunday. So, it'll be a busy weekend. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. I'll see you on Monday. January 19th, 1820. Here's a summary from WV Encyclopedia. Fairmont is located in north central West Virginia, where the West Fork and Tigart Valley Rivers join to form the Monongahela. I said that. Fairmont was established by the Virginia legislature on January 19th, 1820. It became the county seat when Marion County was created in 1842.